checking into a hot topic. We're talking about childcare and why it's important to raise kids in a certain way. Yeah, so this question came up on Reddit, sparking a discussion amongst parents specifically. So um, they wanted to figure out how to raise their kids with the right values and priorities. And then a savvy nanny chimed in with advice that um, Reddit couldn't help but applaud. She says, just be there for your kids. In a world where nannies are helpers and often play a significant role in the children's lives, this nanny's message was clear. Just um, because you have the help doesn't mean that your nanny should replace in parenting. It's about being there physically and emotionally for the kids. And um, the saying goes, presence is a press. Is I messed it up. Presence is a best present. So true. So true. So true. Uh, I think it's, you know, the question was, you know, what can you do? And it's the nanny is saying, just be there, you yeah. know, like you simply being there and being mm-hmm. present with your kids, not on your phone makes all the difference and just really listening to them and hearing them, which uh, brings us back to the interview that we had with Dr. Saliha Freedy last week, mm-hmm. who is the founder of the Lighthouse Arabia. Um, and she looks a lot at kind of mental health for kids. And she just said, just be with your kids. Yeah. And it's not about saying, hey, how are you? It's actually just being friendly yeah. and understanding them. So they may not open up to you on the first go, but if you're with them uh, consistently, then you'll understand a bit more about their lives. Yeah. So, but in this case, the nanny who jumped into the conversation, she suggested make memories with your kids that don't heavily rely on material possessions. So memories don't necessarily mean going to Disneyland. In a city where the culture often revolves around travel and material distractions, find moments of genuine connection (coughs) um, and that becomes even more valuable. So the nanny's advice extends to teaching basic life skills. I think this is so great, like cooking and cleaning. Uh, Dubai sometimes might feel like a bit of a bubble, But these skills will benefit your kids later in life as well if uh, they choose to settle elsewhere. Yeah, kids often mirror the household culture. Growing up in a materialistic environment makes them more likely to adopt the same values. Therefore, being present as a parent is crucial. Help them understand the values of earning rather than simply receiving. Whilst providing for your children is great, there is a fine line between caring for the needs and supporting them. I truly have a lot of thoughts to almost every sentence we spoke. So... Parents aren't just going to get nannies and um, just people that help in the house for the sake of not wanting to spend time with their kids. I grew up with more memories with my nanny than with my parents. And that wasn't necessarily by choice. It's because my parents were fending for the family to such extremes. My parents wouldn't spend so much time within the country. Exactly, for us. And I think they had that sense of resilience instilled with them. Times were different. I was going to say 100 years ago, but like 40 years ago. And um, they they had to go through all these obstacles to provide the life that we have now. And it's not that they didn't want to spend time with us. They just had to show love in different ways. Mm-hmm. So for me, my the maid that I grew up with, she taught me the alphabet. She taught me how to crack my knuckles. She could even read, by the way, but she learned the alphabet to teach me the alphabet. And all my memories growing up are all related to her. So like, I'm always going to... love her as a second mom and I think a second part of it is but on that point do you think your uh, the values you uphold as a person came from your nanny or from your parents because I think this is what this nanny is saying is like you know the nannies are around but actually if you want to show them how to be grateful Mm -hmm. and to grow up kind of in a non-materialistic way the parents have to instill that in them because it comes from a household culture I think that's where the Like, I'm sure my values did come from my nanny, but then my parents still had to show me where they came from, all the obstacles that they had to go through, all the sacrifices that they had to make. And I think in a place like Dubai, where you come and everything's beautiful, but then you go back home and see where your parents came from and what real life is like and what the rest of your family has to deal with. Like, my family in Africa, they don't have hot water to shower with, and that's like a countrywide thing, you know? Um, in Tanzania specifically. And that was a culture shock for me, but that was how my dad grew up. Mm. Like I was so like taken off guard by the reality of what my roots are, that just having that experience was eye-opening. My dad would say, I'd, I'd have to walk two kilometers every day to go to school and you have a driver, which is true. Like him saying that 
makes me more appreciative for the driver that would come 10 minutes late every day and make me late for school. But I'm still appreciative to the fact that I had a driver when my dad had to walk in God knows what weather conditions every day to school. It's, that's so interesting and it's so true that there's a vast distinction between how we live our life here versus how we might live in the country that we came mm-hmm. from. I think that's, uh, that can be said for a lot of people. Um, obviously, that's quite extreme when, you, when they don't have hot water in yeah. where your dad grew up. But then I also think that it's important to, you know, you can, your parent can tell you something and they can say, I had it so different, you have a better, be grateful. But it's actually, how do you actually instill that? Mm-hmm. You know, you can say things over and over, but for kids to genuinely be appreciative of what they have around them, I think it's very difficult. So what the nanny's saying here is to be present. But also, I always think it's important to like, show them the value of a the dirham, dollar. show them the value of a book. So like, growing up, we worked from, you know, 13, 14, 15, and like, you know, like, Yeah. Charge of jobs, like I was at a parking lot taking cash and, you know, taking money in. But you then you get a, a monthly paycheck or you're getting. So obviously, um, I think from the age of 16 here, you can take side jobs. But I think even those like side hustles for kids where they're learning, you know, they're understanding money a bit more and they're understanding where the money comes from. Or even if you give them pocket money and then they have to use that to purchase yeah. things that they like. I think that's really important rather than just the give, the give, the give yeah, for as sure. they get older. For sure. The pocket money situation like really puts you in your place when You want to hang out with your friends, you want to do this, like that teaches you not necessarily the value of the buck, but just teaches you a budgeting and like appreciating money for what it is. And I think having a job at such a young age is so, so, so important. I always wanted to work at McDonald's when I was 16. Like it was, it's the same situation in Oman, you'd have to be 16 to get a job. I always wanted to do it, but my dad always said no. And that's like, I think a cultural thing, like why would you work when I'm working for you? But I think it's for the parents to push kids to just get get outside of their comfort zone. You spend all of summer doing nothing besides the two weeks you're traveling. So that's where you build like character and skills and just appreciation for the small things. So true. Um, parents, if you're watching, you obviously have a much greater insight. So it's so easy for me to be like, you know, show them the value of a book, mm-hmm. send them out to work, or like pocket money for chores. But parents know what it's actually like. So even if we talk about, you know, establishing screen time with the kids, Um, I don't have kids and I'd be like, oh yeah, I just won't, I won't give my kids an iPad. My sister has three kids below the age of six and that's just not, it's game over. You know, like they, they're yeah. going on a long journey, the iPads are out, they're sitting <clears> at a restaurant, the iPads are out, you know, like there's only so much you can do when you don't have that help around you. So it's very easy to sit here and to say, to preach, do this and do this and this, but it's also very hard um, to even the, to the be present moment. Yeah. Uh, Simran asked Dr. Salia, you know, you're saying, Uh, who was on the show last week, Simran said, you know, you're saying you're being present, but parents have to work. So mm-hmm. how can you make that happen? And Dr. Salih is like, look, a lot of workplaces will be, um, you know, open to you being there at the school run, like putting them on the bus at the pivotal moment, picking them up from the bus. Like you can't be there their whole lives. They have to go out themselves. But if you can be there for the important moments when you fear that maybe if they're like an anxious kid to help them, then that's also important. For this is a very like, Traumatic story? Um, not really. So when I had my middle school graduation, everyone's parents showed up except mine. And I had a cousin as well in my same year group. And his mom, my aunt, came and she was like, where's your mom and dad? And I was like, they're working. And I ran off and cried. I was the one person that didn't have their parents there because they were outside of the country. Um, but I think it's moments like those that really showed me what my parents are doing. So. It is easy to say everything, but like at the same time, it is hard. Like my parents would come back at six every day and not necessarily want to socialize immediately, but still go and sit on my mom's lap, every, like four of us yeah. on one sofa. It wasn't a big sofa. We'd all just sit on her and she'd be on her phone, like trying to relax, trying to take a nap. But we just want to be around her. So I think, yeah, it's just those moments that show you what your parents go through and like what the reality of being a parent and being a kid is. Yeah, it's really tricky for kids to, it's interesting that you said that that showed you what they were doing because I think it's tricky for kids to really sometimes understand what their parents are doing for them. 